and I turn my camera on just so you can see who I am. But what I what we do find is that if I have it on, it sometimes can delay the pictures and so forth. So when I get started with the slides, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on off. I'm uh, an OBGYN physician, but my undergraduate was in biochemistry. And uh, this is some genetic stuff that came out uh, really in 2005, 2006, that has answered a lot of questions we've had over the years. And more and more, it's answering more questions. So initially, it was thought that MTHFR was the, the big one, but it turns out it's just one of many. And so it's really about how genetics and the environment and working together, we can understand the problems and treat them much better. So, all right, with that, we will get started. So again, genetics and the environment, and this is really how you can improve that with using um, some nutritional supplementation and also being aware of certain things that increase your risk and avoiding them so and and it is complex information and i know some people are like well this is way too much but i part of what i'm trying to do is help you understand this has a lot of good basic science behind it there's two major pathways that affect a lot of our health problems. One is called methylation, and the other is called the glutathione pathway. And involved in those pathway are many of the things that we consider toxins today, like the plastic stuff, the BPA, affect these pathways. But what we've been able to determine is that there are a number of nutritional supplements that really help improve the symptoms and also help in removing toxins. So this is a slide just to kind of put a lot of the information you hear out there in perspective. So genomics is the study of your DNA. But just because your DNA says one thing, it's affected by something called epigenomics or the regulation of your DNA. And then it has to get transcribed into RNA and then into enzymes and proteins. And what really affects you is the metabolism that is made by all of those things ahead of time. So we've been able to do some of the other studies. We, we can do people's genetics and, and we can do their um, proteins and check those, but it's really the metabolites that seem to affect it the most. And then what's interesting is that I may have genetics that predispose me to certain problems, but that can be modified by getting sunlight, by different medications, by diet, by the gut microflora, and by toxins. And so um, what we had hoped initially was going to be really simple. Turns out it's not all that much. But when we look at the metabolism just of the folic acid, folic acid is crucial for every step in the body pretty much. And But when we give somebody folic acid, it has to go through all of these steps to become L-methylfolate. And if it doesn't get there, it's a problem. And so this enzyme defect then affects this last step. Well, the other things that affect this last step are mercury, lead, and the plastic stuff called BPA. So if you've got a bad gene and environmental toxins, 
it blocks your ability to make uh, methionine, which is your uh, protein synthesis, and then it all and blocks your ability to fight off viruses. It also blocks your ability to make things like serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine, which I'm going to show you in the next slide. So all of this methylfolate is crucial to, to making BH4, which then helps with making all of your nerve transmitters, the serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and melatonin, which is why it affects sleep. So the other things that we have discovered over the years is that if you don't get enough methylfolate in the brain, and it only gets into the brain if it's in that methylfolate stage. So you think about all the things that block it to get there. Well, if it doesn't get into the brain, then you have impaired healing, your nerves don't work very good, you can uh, damage your DNA and so you age faster and it can damage the blood vessels in your brain which causes seizures and strokes and those kinds of things. So, so it's a big deal and if we can figure out ways to bump up the methylfolate in your brain, we can heal many of these problems and that's really what's happened. So the data now on it is very good. When we first got this in 2006, the data was pretty good, but now we got really good data on how we can improve your health. So the other thing is that we're trying to get methylfolate and we go, well, maybe if we just give really high doses of folic acid, we can just push it to the methylfolate. The problem with that is high doses of folic acid will block the receptors and not let the methylfolate in. And the methylfolate is the only one that can get into the brain and do any good. So what we have to do then is give high doses of the methylfolate to counteract the folic acid that's in our food. and um that's hard to pull that out of and so we're just what what we end up doing is giving high doses of this l-methylfolate and then it out competes the folic acid that's hanging around but this also means when you have a folic acid test it can be really high but what's in the brain can still be low And, you know, when this started out, we started out with one gene defect on MTHFR, and then we started out with two, and then we, by 2009, we had 70 different mutations. And the ones that are tested for are just the, the two common ones, but then we realized that there's a lot more to it than we thought. And then the next step is this MTR, and the step after that is MTRR. And they're also important in disease. And you can have, uh, you can be normal in the common ones, but still have defects as you go along. So it's important to understand that anymore, just getting a blood test doesn't really give you uh, the picture of what you need to do to get better. So who's at risk for it? Well, people with depression. We found out that depression was a big factor in this. And also people who are exposed to the plastic stuff, the BPA and the heavy metals, which is all of us. <laughs> and then, as I mentioned, the if you do a blood test for folic acid or B12, they may be normal or even high, but it's measuring the inactive form and it doesn't reflect what's actually gotten into the cell. So what this got 
approved through the FDA back in 2006 for depression, anxiety, memory loss, nerve pain, and high-risk pregnancy. So, so it had good data in 2006 for these conditions, but it turns out it has much better data now and even uh, data for other conditions as well. So the other things that can affect it are things like fibromyalgia, which is a disruption in these two pathways, the methylation and the um, glutathione pathway, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel, migraines, bipolar, schizophrenia, autism, and uh, then a number of pregnancy-related problems, including birth defects. So the other interesting thing that came out in last, well, two years ago in 2020, was that this is one of the pathways related to COVID-19 and other viral illnesses. So we realized that some of the stuff we were doing to help with this in other conditions also helped with the COVID-19. And these are conditions that if we treat this methylation pathway, we can dramatically improve the symptoms. And without treatment, people with this deficiency are prone to infections. And they also are more prone to retaining the environmental toxins, the heavy metals, the BPA, because this is the pathway that clears them. So who's going to benefit? Well, if you look at genetics, we have about 70% of the people in the U.S. that have at least a partial defect in this pathway. But all of us are exposed to toxins that will affect this pathway. So it's really something worth looking at for everybody. And so again, low methylfolate, you get low serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, low glutathione. Well, glutathione's needed for memory, and it's needed to... Glutathione is in every cell and organelle in the body. And so if your glutathione's low, you're in trouble, and health-wise, and it's worth trying to get that. The other thing is that there's something called BH4, and it's called BH4 because some people have trouble saying tetrahydrobiopterin. Can you imagine? Well, that's what protects your nerves. And so without, if your BH4 is low, you tend to have more nerve pain. And the other things that make that uh, put you at risk for low methylfolate are a whole list of drugs. I named a few, metformin, birth control pills, and methotrexate. A whole host of diseases. The big ones are diabetes, thyroid, Crohn's disease, and kidney. Uh, and then lifestyle, smoking, alcohol, and then toxin exposure. Some of us, you know, sometimes we're working with things that create a big exposure. And then aging, and it turns out I haven't figured out how to solve this one yet. So as you get older, the uh, you need more of the methylfolate to keep your levels the same. And we talked about the MTHFR, but the MTRR and the MTR, um, because I, say that because I'm not sure you want to remember the names, but the idea is, is that it's not a single gene, it's multiple genes. And then obesity is associated with the toxins. And so those all contribute to the risk factors. And if you look at just environmental toxins in general, there's lots of them out there. 
and they don't necessarily do a lot of human exposure because they go, well, we're not giving them to humans. But <coughs> when they when they they do the environmental toxin surveys and see what people absorb, there's a lot of them that they didn't expect the uh, chemicals to be absorbed, but they are, uh, especially in things like hair products. It absorbs directly through the skin. And, um, and we know that chemical exposures contribute to cancer and problems with pregnancy and diabetes, thyroid, and then a, a whole host of neurologic problems like fibromyalgia and Parkinson's. In fact, when I was first learning about this, I learned that the way they get rats for testing Parkinson drugs is they take 100 rats, they give them one dose of a pesticide, and 100% of the rats get Parkinson's. And then they ship them off and they get to test their new drug. And I'm like, maybe we're studying the wrong thing. How do we get rid of the pesticides that seem to cause Parkinson's in humans? So, and then uh, the metabolic uh, chronic fatigue type symptoms. Um, I just wanted to mention real quick with autism that when they looked at the genetics, most kids with autism have one of the two major MTHFR genes. And it's really this idea of genetic exposure or genetic predisposition and then the environmental exposure. So the, and then if you look at, okay, well, and then we're exposed to heavy metals. Most of us get heavy metals in our water. Um, Cause the water systems will take out some, but not all of them. And if your body can clear them, great. But if it can't, then you have more problems. And so uh, the other thing is, is that some waters that are used to grow foods. Uh, there was a uh, instance in Southern California where they were using fracking water because there was a water shortage to grow their organic kale. Well, <laughs> it absorbed a whole bunch of heavy metals that, which then caused disease if you were eating a lot of kale. So, um, so the other things that it can cause are, well, a whole host of things, but a lot of neurologic things, uh, depression, schizophrenia, fatigue, memory loss, and hearing loss, as well as uh, nerve pain and nerve symptoms, as well as GI problems, diarrhea, colon cancer, liver problems, so a whole host of things that we, and gray hair like me, I have gray hair. So we know that heavy metal toxicity is prevalent and that it causes diabetes. We know that the bisphenol A or the BPA is prevalent and it causes diabetes and causes a lot of the environmental toxin problems that we have, a lot of thyroid disease. Uh, in women, it causes problems with ovulation and something called endometriosis. So now I've told you all these horrible things. What can I do about it? What should I do about it? Well, since a lot of people have these kinds of problems, then um, what I want to do now is just present some simple things that you can do. Uh, most of them are fairly inexpensive and over the counter. And uh, some of them are more expensive, but for a lot of people make a big difference. So first thing is there's no substitute for good nutrition. You can't uh, you know, eat hamburger, french fries, and not see a green vegetable ever and still 
get all of the nutrients you need. So you, you need to eat a variety of foods. And we're going to talk about some of the nutritional supplements. And a lot of that helps with your pathway that clears the toxins. And then you also want to say, OK, what do I have that may be contributing? So sometimes, you know, microwaving and plastic is a problem. The other thing they've found is that the mercury fillings slowly release toxins into your body. And if you can clear them, great, you don't have a problem. But if you can't clear them, then they tend to build up. And then the DNA testing. So what DNA tests should you do? Well, most of the time, none, because you try these nutritional things we're going to talk about, and the majority of the time it will take care of it and so since the factors are not just genetic, they're also uh, associated with the toxins, doing the testing only picks up the genetics and doesn't pick up the toxins. We're hoping down the road we can get a better test and we can be much more specific in our recommendations. But for now, this this works pretty well for the vast majority of people that try it. So the other talk guidelines to reduce toxins are you want to have filtered water. So even if the water is filtered at your city water system, a lot of times it picks up additional toxins over the uh, distribution lines. And so filtering your water at the at the place where you fill up your water bottles is helpful. The other thing is, is that even the plastic that says it's BPA free, it's still plastic and it usually has BPB, BPS, BPF, which are about as bad, but they don't have as big a, of a reputation. <laughs> so then you've got, uh, you wanna drink, out of stainless steel and glass water bottles. You really want to eat as organic as you can and you want to wash your fruits and vegetables. So there's a a lot of the, um, there's some cleaners for fruits and vegetables that have grapefruit oil in them that helps clear out those, the any uh, pesticides or toxins that are on your fruits and vegetables. You want to cook with glass in the microwave and the non-stick pans seem to be a problem. The other thing that's been fascinating over the last 40 years is the data on using a sauna. And what they showed, and a lot of this came out of Norway where everybody's got a sauna, is you could cut the risk of heart disease in half, Alzheimer's by three-fourths, and stroke by two-thirds just by using the sauna uh, four days a week. And then you want to use organic cleaners and no synthetic fragrances because those are hard for your body to clear. And, um, and also HEPA filter, uh, NASA did some interesting studies with the space station, so it's a pretty confined environment. You can't open up the window and air it out. And so they were noticing there were some toxins from all of the things in the space station, and they studied plants that uh, would pull the toxins out of the air. So I've become more green at uh, having plants. <laughs> and so it talked about dietary fruits and berries tend to be really good. Um, mathematics, doing things that keep your brain um, organized helps. Piano, classical music, uh, exercise, and uh, being participating in structured music. Now, some of my friends that did rock band, not much of their music was structured. So, but the studies were in uh, if you're doing 
music, it will help with some of the symptoms. So that's those environmental factors that can improve things, even though your genetics and environmental toxins are a problem. Now, as I talk about these, just one at a time. Don't start 10 things all at once. You do want to drink or, and cook with filtered water. And then I'm going to discuss N-acetylcysteine, glutathione, methyl B12, and methyl folate. And I list the um, doses that I typically start with with an adult. So I've changed the order now because in my mind, this N-acetylcysteine is huge. It's, it's very important. It's also over the counter and pretty cheap. And what they found was that if you used N-acetylcysteine, it prevented COVID, it treated COVID, and it treated the long COVID symptoms. And so then the FDA last fall, or in fall of 2020, said, well, this works really well. Maybe we should uh, make it prescription. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So Amazon quit selling that in uh, May of 2021. And there's a, a big discussion, a healthy discussion on whether or not they should make it uh, prescription because if it's over the counter and been over the counter for 40 years, you know, we don't make much money on that, which drives me crazy, but nonetheless. And then I mentioned glutathione was important. NAC, NAC helps with glutathione, but it's not its only function. So you need NAC, it's an essential amino acid. And in fact, there's a book out that's 500 pages of research on N-acetylcysteine and what it's used for. To give you just an example, here's just a list of the things that are out there that it works for. And, and they rate how good the evidence is but, uh, and, and in fact, I realized I haven't updated this slide because depression now we have level A evidence. So A is the best. And basically it says that it works and it works really well. <coughs> One of the interesting ones I found was the Marine Corps uses it to prevent hearing loss when they get loud noises. And then the other fascinating one was this hair pulling, nail biting, and skin picking. It's the only thing that's been shown to help. And it works really well. I've had, had a lady in her 60s that had the, had the hair twirling since she was a baby. And uh, two weeks on the NAC, it was gone. So, and another interesting thing was in the 2018 review of N-acetylcysteine for psychiatric disorders, given that it's got an excellent safety profile, readily available and inexpensive, they're thinking we ought to put the whole world on it, which I'm good with that because it protects against a lot of the environmental toxins we're exposed to. So, oh, let's see, where's my NAC? So the doses, I usually start with 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams on everybody. And then when they get sick, I'll go up to nine capsules a day. So three capsules, three times a day when people are sick, because that's how it reverses it. So the next one I wanted to go over is glutathione. So glutathione really functions in every cell of your body. It's an antioxidant and it clears heavy metals and the BPA and all of that. 
It also has been shown that if your levels are low, you have memory problems. If your memory is good, your glutathione level is good. So it also helps fight off infections. And probably the two nutritional things that have helped with COVID the most are the NAC and the glutathione. And the two, so glutathione's destroyed by the stomach. But there's two preparations out there that get past the stomach and, and are well absorbed. There's the thorn glutathione, SR stands for sustained release, and it absorbs and is about as good as giving the glutathione through the IV. TestMed used a different technology to get it through the stomach, and it actually showed that it absorbed better than an IV. So those are my two favorite over-the-counter ones. And most, uh, most of the ones that are out there really don't absorb very good. They do have some liquid ones, and uh, I couldn't stand the taste of the liquid ones. So, so this is, those are my favorite there. So, but again, the combination of N-acetylcysteine and glutathione prevents COVID, treats COVID, treats long COVID or post-COVID symptoms, and it treats the side effects of the COVID vaccine. So it's really something we probably all should be on. The next supplement I wanted to go over was B12. So B12 doesn't absorb real well. If you pop a B12 pill, less than 1% of that pill absorbed. So they went to these oral dissolving tablets, which really improves the absorption from less than 1% up to around 20%. So about 20 times more. The uh, ones that work the by far the best are the compounded injections, but most people don't need that. Uh, most people do fine with just the oral dissolving tablets. And then those other things that we talked about, the N-acetylcysteine. And uh, it's important that you have the light and temperature control with the injections. And there are some oral drops for kids because a lot of times the kids aren't very good at, you know, your six month old isn't real good at uh, um, chewing the oral dissolving tablets. So, so those are available as well. And because my family were defective, we ended up uh, using some of the drops with the kids when they had things like stomach pain and constipation and all of that that are all genetically related to what we're talking about. And then methylfolate. So this is the one that came out in 2006, got FDA approved, and it got FDA approved for depression. And uh, I love this slide, so. And it's really got level A evidence, which is it has randomized prospective double-blind studies showing that it works. And the one that's been really studied the most was the original one, because if you make methylfolate, but it, you just make it in a test tube, it doesn't stay potent very long. It just, it degrades. And in fact, it degrades by 50%, sometimes within three months of manufacture and since a lot of the knockoff stuff is made in China, it doesn't get here before three months since they ship it by boat. So metafolin is the generic name. So if it says methylfolate and you look on the back, it'll say what kind it is. Um, and metafolin is the one that was tested. It is prescription. And uh, the two brands out there are Deplin, and they studied both seven and a half or 15 milligrams. The best studies were on the 15 milligrams. 
there was uh, the people that had made it at Deplin ended up once the company got bought out, they said, oh, you already made it. We don't need you anymore. And so they started their own company and they have an equivalent one to Deplin. Then we have uh, Methyl Life. Methyl Life is one that is a crystalline structure, but it's over the counter chewable and the least expensive so kids can take it and chew it and and adults who don't like to take pills they can do it and it does very well then the one the generics out there that just don't work very good are the extra folate the extra folate s the quatrifolate and they just are not as stable so they're not a crystalline structure and they're almost as expensive as the methyl life and the methyl life has better data with it so so that's the methyl folate and again most of the time i just have people use 15 milligrams but start with the nac and then by week three or four is when you'll add the methyl folate so as i mentioned seven and a half or 15 milligrams. You can try other doses, and but most people do better if they're on the higher doses. And we've got level A evidence that it helps with your antidepressant because it um, raises your levels of serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine. And now we've got level A evidence that even if you don't take an antidepressant, it works really well. A couple other things you can think about is Epsom salts. We usually are low in magnesium. And if you soak in Epsom salts, it will absorb the magnesium directly. And that helps with clearing the toxins. And if you take it orally, we use that to clean your bowels out for a colonoscopy. So it's uh, the there are some oral magnesium supplements that are good, but uh, the Epsom salts works really well. And if you're having trouble taking pills, uh, sometimes taking it by soaking your feet in it works pretty well. Vitamin D, they're finding more and more vitamin D. A lot of people that got really sick with COVID had very low vitamin D. And uh, the doses are like 2,000 international units, but sometimes the doses go up to 10,000 or even 25,000. And But if you're going to go that high, I'd definitely get the vitamin D3 test, the 25-hydroxy vitamin. And then uh, mineral supplements are helpful because you're trying to clear the the heavy metals and replace them with good minerals. And I wanted to mention one other option. So the second treatment from the Human Genome Project, the first one was methylfolate, the second one was this BH4. And it was used for people who had an enzyme defect called PKU, which is what they test for when you're a baby. And uh, works really well for PKU. But what we found is if you take a much lower dose, it helps treat some of the depression symptoms that antidepressants and the methylfolate alone didn't clear. And so it helped with things like the um, hurting yourself or cutting yourself, uh, those types of uh, things where you have an urge to um, cause damage to yourself. So, and then what we found also was any type of inflammation got rid of the BH4. So that's why we needed it in some people. And it comes in very high doses, 100 milligrams for the PKU. Um, Mally's Pharmacy has compounded it down to a much lower dose so that we can 
take it and a lot of people that are struggling with these intrusive thoughts thoughts of hurting themselves and so forth just taking one to two tablets a day would helps take that away and and that's been amazing because nothing else is done even in the studies where they had uh, people who were depressed and they put them on an antidepressant which helped the depression they still had some of these urges to cut themselves and that kind of thing so this has really made a big difference for a lot of people and then the other things that you can consider is vitamin B6, but the active form of vitamin B6 is P5P. And it can cause uh, some toxicity in some of the, um, in some people who don't clear it. I mean, if you take 300 milligrams a day, it causes toxicity in everybody. But in, uh, even in low doses, it can. And so if we can, uh, and so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have people go on it for a week and then off a week or on for a month and then off for a month. And that way we can make sure you don't have buildup of the, of the B6. Vitamin C is helpful because it regenerates glutathione in the gut. Uh, doing TMG and DMG sometimes will help with this, but I that's a I try the other things first, and the first three or four things that we talked about uh, works for eighty five percent. So uh, most of the time we don't have to get to these, but you'll see about them in the literature. And then the other thing that zinc and probably should have moved that up because it turns out that zinc is very important and zinc has been shown to help with the inflammation and help with the COVID symptoms. So omega-3 is helpful. If you use fish oil, there's a lot of mercury in some of the fishes. So you got to make sure the mercury is removed. My favorite's probably chia seeds because it, it doesn't have to be ground. If you just take flaxseed without grinding them, it just goes right through you and doesn't absorb at all. So chia is my favorite. You don't have to grind it. It does very well. Vitamin E is a um, improves both the uh, inflammation and fatty liver and then there when I started doing this they said oh don't forget silymar and then I go what's that and they go it's milkweed thistle well, what does it do well it regenerates glutathione and helps the liver and I go well I like anything that helps bump the glutathione up but again that's not your primary the primary ones are your methylfolate or your NAC, glutathione, methyl B12, and methylfolate. So this methylation and glutathione pathways are very important. And we've got new insight both by the Human Genome Project and by some of these other studies that have shown that we can dramatically improve people's health just by improving these pathways. And then you want to decrease the amount of toxins coming in. I didn't mention one of the things that the president's cancer panel recommended was taking your shoes off when you come in the house because you track in pesticides that are sprayed on the rocks and to prevent the weeds from growing up. But then if you get them on your carpets and walk across them barefoot, they'll absorb right through your skin. And really, it's a matter of trial and error. Uh, this is something that is pretty much over the counter. Uh, and you can try it and see if it works. And then we want to reduce toxins for everything coming in. And the other thing is, if you can find a sauna and use it, 
very helpful, great studies on the sauna. Uh, my favorite's the infrared, but the studies have been both with infrared and with the steam sauna. So both of them work. And then uh, there's still a lot more to be discovered, but this is something that will improve people's health uh, many times without having to wait for big studies coming out and so forth. And we know why it works. We know how it will help improve some of these things. It uh, in the case of antidepressants, it makes the antidepressants work better. And so it's worth a try. And uh, I love this uh, from Enrico Fermi. And since we're, you know, Tri-Cities, a lot of people worked at the site and know who he is. Before I came here, I was confused about the subject, having listened to your lecture. I'm still confused, but at a higher level. And then if you're not confused, you're not paying attention. So I hope that I didn't lose you or confuse you or perplex you. Uh, questions? So you can either put them in the chat or just come off mute and same. Um, I have a question about some of these supplements. I am yeah. pregnant right now. I'm 25 weeks pregnant. Okay. And I've definitely been struggling. Obviously, it's a part of pregnancy to struggle with memory, but I feel like my physical energy and brain energy have been at an all-time low. I can barely get things done during the day. And just all of these supplements that you listed, um, are they all pregnancy safe? Do you know which ones I could take in addition to my prenatals? Do you have any recommendations So uh, how to help brain fog in pregnancy? Yeah, so the N-acetylcysteine uh, mm -hmm. is, would be fine in pregnancy. And they okay. actually studied the methylfolate, which helps with brain fog. And they showed that if you take that during pregnancy, it dramatically reduces your risk of postpartum hemorrhage or postpartum uh, depression. Really? This is so which one? The methylfolate. The methylfolate. So those two have been studied pretty, pretty extensively. Um, the glutathione would is not a problem in pregnancy. Either there's been no evidence for that one causing any problems, and and the others, um, you know, I'd start with those three because that's where you're going to see most of the benefit. Okay. So, so the NAC, and then the methyl folate, and the um, glutathione. And vitamin D is probably okay, but like I say, I'd start with those. You're already getting vitamin B6 in your prenatals. You're getting vitamin C in your prenatals. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where I'd start. Okay. And the way you said it, I should start with the NAC and then later on move on to the methylfolate and then the glutathione yeah and so i'd start with nac start with one capsule a day for a week or two and then go to two and then you can go to the methylfolate and again you can go with half of a pill of the 15 if you get the chewables you can break them in half and then um slowly increase it may be that just a half a pill of the methylfolate will do you. But we see and a lot of improvement with the brain fog and the memory with that. With methylfolate? Methylfolate and the NAC. So there's oh, actually okay. a, 
a combination that's FDA approved for memory loss, which is those plus the B6 or B12. And you're getting hmm. some of the B12 in your prenatal vitamins. Yeah. Okay. And so I can take the NAC and the methylfolate at the same time. It's not one or the other. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Because I've, I've been taking before pregnancy vitamin B12, but it's a liquid one that's very, very nasty. It was hard for me to take. So I might now, try the pill you'll when you find mentioned. Is the Jaro oral dissolving tablets are uh -huh. really well tolerated. My yeah. grandkids love them. I'll have to find those. Yeah. Now, Mally's carries a lot of this. I mean, I'm not a spokesman for them, but they've been <laughs> listened to me and um, their pharmacists have attended my talks. And so they kind of know what I'm what I'm saying. So. Um, I was recommended um, by my doctor uh, vitamins from patches, their skin patches. Um, they're, so they don't go through the digestive system. And um, so I, I had gotten the glutathione kind of on accident without really knowing. Well, I got it because it said it was good for your liver because it has milkweed in it. <laughs> well, it is good for your liver. Um, I can't see what you've got there, but yeah. uh, a lot of times they're trying to do things over the counter or with the uh, patches to get around the absorption issue and uh and that is another way the the topical um but a lot of times they don't study it so they don't tell you how good it absorbs what i liked about the thorn and the test med is they actually studied it and said how good it absorbs and so Yeah, I've I've been using them for several months now and have noticed a big improvement in good in my health. So well bumping up the glutathione is a huge benefit. Really, and we're really probably all glutathione deficient. <laughs> there was a picture posted in the chat about B12 on Amazon for $13. Yeah, and so that's got the methyl B12, the um, which is great, and but the amount of the methyl folate is only 400 micrograms, so it's a minimal dose. We're talking about using uh, 15,000 micrograms or 15 milligrams, and so I usually just use the Jaro methyl B12 and then get my methyl folate separately with the uh, one of the three that are were on that slide the first three dr rollins i i have a question about folic acid the folic acid that's found in a lot of the supplements that's uh -huh. not methyl folate it I've read that that can be toxic for, for people with MTHR because they can't process it. Is that true? Well, it can get high. So you don't want to take high dose folic acid. Now, uh, they haven't shown that it necessarily is real toxic unless you're taking huge doses of the folic acid. But if you're taking the methyl folate, it's never been shown to have toxicity. Uh, some people, if they're low in glutathione, kind of react a little bit to it. They just don't feel very good. And that's because you've got to get the glutathione built up before you use the methylfolate, which happens pretty quickly. That's why I now have people start on the NAC first and then add the methylfolate later. But yeah, you do, I mean, we get a lot of folic acid in our diet, but 
I wouldn't take any supplemental folic acid. I would take it as methylfolate. Yeah, it, it really makes me wonder about the high doses of folic acid in the supplements for pregnancy. Well, um, so the in pregnancy, they give a thousand micrograms or one milligram. So you're still taking extra and getting in the system with the, the uh, 15 milligrams. So it's 15 times higher than what's in the prenatal vitamins. And none of them really have more than the thousand milligrams in them or a thousand micrograms, which is one milligram. And so this really helps with bumping up your, um, your uh, pathway with the serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine. So I certainly wouldn't take a lot of folic acid, but you're not gonna eliminate it out of your diet either because it's in everything. I wanted to let everybody know I did put my email in the chat. I'll be sending out um, a PDF of the handout or the slides after the program. And so I can pretty much tell by the participant list who you are, but if you don't get the slides, just email me back. And I don't see anything else in the chat, Dr. Rollins. All right. Well, thank you. I hope this is helpful. Um, it's been helpful for my family because my kids tried to die on me. Can you imagine? So it's uh, it's been a very important thing in our family. And I keep a year's supply for all of them because um, I don't want to go back to the prior methylfolate days. Well, we sure appreciate your time and effort in um, presenting for us on a regular basis. Dr. Rollins will be presenting in April and July. Um, and I can send the link to our other programs when I send the slides as well. Thank you so much. This has been very helpful to me. Well, good. Well, I hope it's helpful. I hope it works for you. So. All Absolutely. right. Absolutely.